Every driver has a favorite car, but every true car enthusiast has a favorite engine. And if you want awesome power, a sound that you can feel in your bones, and an unmatched legacy, there's only one choice for you. The naturally aspirated V8. All right, let's do this. Welcome to a sweltering hot Willow Springs. It's gonna be 100 plus degrees out here. I'm sure the track temp is well up over 120. This is a place where uh, some iconic V8s have been developed right here on this racetrack. Made famous again more recently by Ford versus Ferrari. And, you know, you don't really think of V8s as being that commonplace, particularly in open wheel racing, but it's actually a lot of what I've driven. When I won the Indy Lights Championship 2008 and 2009 driving that car, uh, that was a naturally aspirated V8. I raced in the A1GP series, which raced uh, sort of all over the world for Team USA with Andretti Green Racing at the time. You know, when I think of Lexus and V8s as a race car driver, I immediately think back to the Lexus Riley that won the 24 Hours of Daytona. Uh, Scott Pruitt, Memo Rojas, a couple of my buddies from the IndyCar world in uh, Juan Montoya and Scott Dixon drove that car as well. To, you know, now fast forwarding, I was just in the IMSA race a few weeks ago and was racing against the RCF. So Lexus really does have a uh, justifiable history of V8s. That's really, I think, the, the sort of birthplace of where this car really ends up coming from. Every V8 has sort of a signature sound to it. One of the things they definitely got right with this IS is just that sort of unmistakable V8 grunt. It's not super low and rumbly. I don't, I don't love cars that are like that. I like a little bit of pitch. There's nothing artificial about it. You can hear it right through the exhaust. They're not piping it in through the speakers or anything. Um, it's the real engine noise coming out that quad exhaust and I just love it. So I'm really enjoying the IS. Like this is, this is my kind of car very stable as you're entering corners and, and really start to lean out. I can feel the tire underneath it through the suspension. So I can really get to the limit of this car, feel it out, feel it working. And now we've done, you know, we've done 20 or 30 laps. I mean, we're still just cruising along and clicking them off. All right, so while we're out driving around, I thought it might be a good idea to call up uh, our man Cooper Erickson, who was resp really responsible for making this car happen. So let me see if, uh, let me see if I can get him on the phone here. Good afternoon, this is Cooper. Hey Cooper, it's JR Hildebrand. How you doing, man? Hey JR, I'm doing great. What are you up to today? Well, uh, I'm out here at Willow Springs, approaching turn six. So uh, I thought this would be a perfect time to give you a shout and see how it's going. When we were designing the new IS, uh, we were looking at the initial specs and realized the vehicle was about an inch and a half wider and a longer wheelbase. We're using some chassis components from the GS and the RC and it became pretty obvious. We got a big V8 in those two cars, so why can't we shove it in the IS? I think a lot of people are seeing the automotive industry changing. We're going more towards electrification and sort of wondering where that emotion is gonna to continue to come from. The passion and enthusiasm is what we really wanna emphasize in, in our, our products, and we have the ability to do that. We'll have EV, we have hybrids, but we also have the ability to do products like this that we wanna jump on when we can. All right, Cooper, well, thanks so much for taking some time. It's been awesome to learn a little bit more about this car from your perspective. having a little bit too much fun with this now out here on the racetrack. So we're gonna go see what it's like in a real world road test with Jordan Marin, AKA Captain Sparkle, his 10 million plus YouTube followers. Jordan, while well, we're entering Upper Big Tahunga. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your day job, man. So I primarily sit at my computer, play video games, and make content about that. It's what I've been doing for about 11 years. I'm gonna start gaining experience, then we have to turn into something that's, oh my God, it's right there. What am I gonna, I'm about to turn into, what, I'm an iron golem. 
I'm a wither skeleton. Like nine of that has been it's an actual full-time job. I was gonna say that I think you're making it sound a lot easier than it really is. Yeah. And you've got a bit of a car collection yourself. Yeah, so let's see. Right now I have a 911 GT3 RS 2019 model. I have a Ford GT 2018. I have a Carrera GT oh. and I've got a BMW M2. So um, there's some naturally aspirated motors in there. Big fan of those. I I don't know where the, the enthusiasm started for cars as early as like age two or three. I I go to the Peterson Museum with my mom. I'd run around look at all the cars. You know, I know when I was a kid, it was the same thing. I had Hot Wheels cars. It was it was all about the look. Um, you know, what stands out to you about this IS500? The showpiece really is the naturally aspirated V8, because obviously you have so many manufacturers these days, to, like they're going electric. This just has gone in the complete opposite direction. You don't even necessarily want something that can go zero to 60 in two seconds, because you're at the end of what you can enjoy. For me, the driving experience, a huge component of that, is just having a car that, that sounds great and I think this has it. I like the color of the paint that we've got on this thing. Yeah, it's got bigger fender flares, wider tires, handling-wise, it, it feels that way. It's nice going around these twisties. As a collector, you watch the market, you kind of see what's coming and going. Do you think it's possible that this is like among the last naturally aspirated V8s that we'll see? Oh, man, I, I wish I wish it weren't. You look at the the super and hypercar manufacturers, and it's like if that's the direction that they're going, you've got to imagine that everything is going to trickle down. This could be sort of a swan song. All right, man. Well, this has been awesome. I've really enjoyed sitting here passenger. I'm, I'm usually a terrible passenger, and I've actually really enjoyed this. So kudos to you. It's not, not all the car, I don't think. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, we're going to head off to the Peterson to go meet Johnny Lieberman, talk a little bit about the history of the V8. So thanks so much, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. This has been very fun. So we're here at the Peterson to look at some iconic V8s with our man Johnny Lieberman. You know, a little bit like being at the Louvre or maybe the Metropolitan. This place is really incredible upstairs, but where you want to get to is down in the vault. Johnny, what's up, man? Mr. Hildebrand, man. <laughs> nice to finally meet you. I've been yeah, a big you fan too. for a long time. Same, same. Um, you know, I know we're here to talk about V8s, but you know, it, it's, it's a you know, papaya McLaren Can Am car with a Chevy V8. Oh my god, I, can you even imagine getting in the in the driver's seat on this thing? I don't think I'd fit, but uh, <laughs> no, it's like a magnet, you know, I'm just drawn to it. But we got some other ones over there. So we're at the Peterson and we could look at any cars we wanted, but I figured let's look at some American V8s, right? I think that's a good place to start. Start over here, 1935 Ford. I want to show you this one because what's so cool about it is, you know, Clyde Barrow, Bonnie and Clyde fame. <laughs> he was said when he would steal a car and he stole a lot of cars, he would always look for a Ford because they were quick and they were reliable. That's right, yeah, and the flathead became famous for hot, re hot rodders using them everywhere. Absolutely. Oh, speaking of hot rod, uh, this thing, right? This is a Bosley. No one's ever heard of it. It's one of ones, the only one that ever existed. But he was trying to make this great sports car, Mr. Bosley, and he put a Chrysler Hemi in there. But really, I brought you here to look at this. 427 Shelby Cobra. Shelby Cobra, right? And so I think, you know, very few cars scream American louder than this. I think that's about right. Well, first of all, I should mention, the V8 was actually invented by a Frenchman, right, 1902. Uh, this is a British chassis that does have an American heart, but there's a Volkswagen steering column in there. We like to think of the V8 as our own, but it's not. It's really this great international symbol of power, which leads us back to Lexus. And I think it's incredible, like, they got a V8 in the IS500, there's one in the LC, the GX has one, the LX has one, and they're all naturally aspirated. And if you look at, like, Cadillac, Cadillac right now, they have two vehicles that have a V8. Lexus has twice as many. I mean, that brings it, us to maybe the most important question of all here, looking at all of these different V8s over various eras and time. You know, we see the automobile industry changing right now. You see electrification coming in. Do you think this is the last era of the naturally aspirated V8? I mean, look, my head says yes, obviously, but my heart says no. And also, you know, with Lexus, like, they keep surprising us. That's no right. one saw the IS500 coming, so who knows? Yeah. 